Hello, I'm Jeffrey Fox here, and we're starting this next lecture set, which is on MapReduce in general, and Hadoop in particular. And we're going to start off in this uh, first few slides on the introduction to the overall lecture and on to how it uh, MapReduce and Hadoop fit into a cosmic uh, view of big data software systems. MapReduce is somehow a symbol of big data, and that it was the first major technology introduced, and it was incredibly successful, given that it didn't really exist as a concept before 2004, when it was introduced by uh, Jeffrey Dean and collaborators at Google. And it's staggering how such a simple idea had escaped people's notice. Actually, people used MapReduce before, they didn't call it by that name, but most importantly, they didn't realize the importance of implementing an optimal version of that particular technology. Which is simpler than many of the things people do, certainly in parallel computing. All right, so here we are. This is part A. Let's go. So in this lecture set, we're going to have a little bit of discussion of overall big data issues. A little bit of data, a discussion of um, what created MapReduce and what it does and how it's set up. We're going to go through in detail Hadoop as the base technology. You know, um, we will do two examples of while we're in, in this slide set work count, which is actually probably not it's the easiest of the two, but also it's the more typical. And page rank, which is historically important as it uh, established the world dominance of Google. Uh, but it is not actually terribly typical of applications running on Hadoop. It is typical of applications running on more, more, more powerful but less uh, well-used technologies. Now, there are other uh, slide decks in this, uh, in this overall class, including most closely related to this, the slide deck on Spark. Okay, let's go. All right, here we are. This is a slide deck uh, which summarizes 350 software systems. And they're arranged in 21 layers. Each of those layers corresponds to a particular functionality important in big data systems. And Hadoop fits into this very important category, 14A, which is basic programming model and runtime. And it's highlights map produce up here. And Hadoop is the first entry and Spark is the second entry. And uh, 14, level 14, I eventually, I originally only have one layer of that around those concepts, but then I split it into um, what you might call batch processing or repository processing or stream processing. And stream processing does similar things to, to, to um, batch processing, but does it for data buzzing in and a real time stream, such as Twitter, uh, Twitter tweets or um, e-commerce um, clicks and so on. And the amazing thing is there are, even in 2016 January, there are 350. There's probably 500 of these now, because I decided that I'd made the point, and I shouldn't, I didn't even have room really to up, up, update it. And we didn't gain anything, because we were just adding more examples. And I didn't find any new layers for some time. This is a part of a concept called HPC ABDS, the High Performance Computing Enhanced Apache Big Data System, which is our view of how these uh, software systems will be architected. All right. Uh, notice above this level are things like Hive, which we will come to, which is SQL on top of Hadoop. Hadoop was originally designed to do database operations in a way that made the parallelism much easier than for traditional database engines. All right, so when we look at uh, MapReduce, this is not a Duke MapReduce, we notice it has a very um, nice parallelism method, which people uh, find very exciting because it's simplicity. We know this is simplicity comes because it's only doing simple problems. Uh, if we look back at some of the older days of parallel computing, we could actually do lots of wonderful interfaces for parallel computing for solving differential equations. 
But then after about five years, uh, the sophisticated uh, solvers of such equations got to such complex ideas that these simple methods did not work. We will have to see if big data suffers that problem. It might do, at least for some applications, because the reason why Spark and Hadoop are so easy to use is, part, use is partly because they only solve one problem. All right, so anyway, a critical feature of, of um, Hadoop and Spark and things is they're looking at distributed computing. Now, if you look at parallel computing and distributed computing, they're roughly the same thing. Although in parallel computing, we assume everything is very close together, so we get very fast communication. In distributed computing, we assume things can be far apart, although we can still expect to get better performance if things are closer to each other. Fault tolerance is pretty important because these big data systems are pretty, pretty messy. They're in implemented in a way that allows faults to enter the system. And we need to find a very easy automatic approach to fault tolerance. Um, driving the big data system is data. That data lives in files. Notice this is the batch system with or repository system where it is files for the um, real-time systems. Those uh, data will be streaming in from the outside world. And there are several interesting programming models or programming interfaces attached to MapReduce. All right, so if we look at big data. Originally, when I used to do um, work in this field, uh, maybe in the 80s, I was told that what was important was processing ATM, ATM transactions. That's what was the dominant business application, and people solved large scale computers to companies to do that type of work. A transaction processing where each of the transactions was incredibly high value. You're never allowed to make a mistake in the bank processing. But now, now when we come to the big data revolution, we have a much broader range of applications, Facebook, YouTube, Gmail, Amazon, Snapchat, dot, 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 and Instagram. And that's a broader range, or LinkedIn, and that's a broader range of applications. Um, especially if we're now going to look at you know applying it to healthcare, so we're going to be running genomic analysis and things like that. So a much broader range of applications, and we needed more sophisticated technology. And also the emphasis on robustness was not quite as important. When you do a search, you don't really notice that the search only went over 99.3% of the world's data rather than 99.99%. And so a certain amount of faults in reading, in this case, reading the uh, search engine, so the stored search data is allowed. Um, even in a tweet, well, maybe there's some very important people whose tweets are sacred. But in general, if there's a small mistake in a tweet or a tweet gets delayed a little, that is not a disaster. Whereas if you made a mistake in a bank account, or, or that would be a catastrophe, and people assume that mistakes are never made. So a huge emphasis were in uh, uh, earlier data processing system was never making faults. In MapReduce and more generally cloud computing, you need to control faults and be uh, smoothly uh, oblivious to them and address them. Uh, <coughs> so. We then went to, there was a lot of research, actually most of it was in industry. Places like Google produced most of the pioneer uh, results because they had actually all the data. It's not so easy to do this uh, stage of, actually even now it's not so easy to do uh, research in this area. Because we don't have the data that these uh, large companies do. All right, so here we have this. Uh, Really major, major work. Not everybody, including me, recognized its importance when it came out in 2004. It is now cited by almost 24,000 um, other papers, and it's uh, up on the Google website, and obviously lots and lots of other places. And this was this. Well, this is what we're going to discuss in this section. So, MapReduce was not noted. 
for its uh, deep, sophisticated ideas, but the fact that it highlighted an incredibly important um, application paradigm and that it showed how to do that with huge efficiency and usability. Remarkable. So here we have it uh, illustrated here by Sam, who is trying to um, have some uh, juice made from the apple. And so this, uh, this is a sequential Sam. He is just making uh, one juice from one apple. And here is the equivalent of the map process, which is cutting the apple, putting it in the blender, and making the juice. That's this all here is the uh, map, and here where there is no reduce because you just while well, the reduction is just pouring all the results into the into the glass. All right. Now we want to you know if we have lots of sams and lots of juice, and the juice needs to be configured in different ways. We have a more sophisticated. You know, uh, Problem and we have to be more creative. And notice that we have uh, we introduce our key value pairs, which are critical in MapReduce because it's the data structure it supports. A key is the A for apple, or O for orange, or B for pineapple. And every real apple, or real orange, or real pineapple is associated with a key. And the value of the key is the actual physical um, fruit. Uh, then we go to a map stage, which is cutting the fruit up. Yum, yum, yum. Here we are. Lots of mappers. The mappers are knives. And those mappers are all diligently work in parallel. Notice each knife works in parallel. And they produce a whole set of output key value pairs. Well, they're still key value pairs, but the actual value, the keys are the same. Or oh, well, they're really actually. Apple slices and orange slices and pineapple slices, and they're related but not quite the same, maybe. And the values are certainly different because they're all sliced up. Then what do we do? We then do a reduction operation, which um, sorts the um, apples, pineapples, and oranges into groups which you want to make particular juice. Here we have the apple orange juice, the orange pineapple juice, and the pineapple apple juice. And those go into separate blenders. This is the reduction operation. And they finally get stored in the bottle and sold at the, uh, well, maybe it's now sold online. Uh, previously, it's been sold at the store. All right, here we are. That's the answer. This is map produce for drinking for eating fruit. So you map a list of key value pairs into another list of key value pairs. You group them by the key. And you reduce them to a list of values. This is the key concept in MapReduce. All right, so after that example, we get on to some more formal and probably less exciting discussion. So it's a programming model, or a runtime model. It's both programming and runtime model. It's uh, involved with huge data sets, because when we apply because this, uh, this effectively describes every single database operation. It's a particular case of MapReduce. And um, terabytes, of course, is a um, pretty small amount of data these days. It's going to be um, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, and so on. But um, actually, today in science, hundreds of terabytes is a large number for operational use. And the largest experiment, which is the Large Hadron Collider at uh, CERN, which is looking for Higgs bosons and related fundamental particles, it has now around 100 petabytes of data. Um, so, okay. And now we need to process this. And that processing, as I mentioned, is typically done in a distributive fashion. When Google processes its searches, it is not doing all its uh, processing in one place. It's doing it in a coordinated fashion across the world. And indeed, the people processing the uh, Higgs boson data from CERN are also processing it on, on around the world. Although they would not call it a cloud, they would call it a grid. 
although it is essentially a, a sort of early version. What's agreed is, an, for this purpose, is an early version of a crowd. Um, each instance of MapReduce, MapReduce has lots of instances. Each one will probably run on an individual cluster, and so actually, in some sense, is parallel computing. MapReduce does itself not imply terribly close coupling between components. And so effectively, it looks more like a distributed computing paradigm. Because the key difference between parallel and distributed computing is that for parallel computing, you want microsecond latency in the synchronization between uh, different parts. Whereas for distributed computing, it, it can be um, certainly milliseconds and often when it's across the country, hundreds of milliseconds. So naturally, MapReduce has maps and reductions. I already illustrated that for fruit. Mapping is cutting it up. Reduction is joining the different cutters, joining all the oranges together, and so on. So here are some pictures coming from the NIST working group on big data. And um, here's an example where um, you might take data coming in. That data is stored on a disk. This disk has an interface, which is either a file system where the Hadoop file system, HDFS, is the one you'd most look at for this these lecture notes. And HDFS is hugely popular as the backend for everything. HBase is a so-called NoSQL database, which is a slightly more advanced uh, interface to HDFS. Also coming originally from uh, uh, um, Google. And then on top of this, we will run these various technologies, all in that wonderful set of 350 I showed. And the one we're looking at here is Hadoop, and we'll later look at Spark. Giraffe is a, and Pig is a way of running lots of Hadoop jobs together. Giraffe is particularly aimed, comes from Facebook, and is aimed at processing the um, um, graphs that Facebook gets from connections of people. On top of this programming model, say Hadoop, we will run a library with functionalities such as Mahout or R. Well, we, and or we will use a database. And Hive is the engine which you put on top of Hadoop to give it to, to be able to make SQL queries at it. And that's good because many people know how to make SQL queries. And Hive is controlled by each catalog, the metadata catalog. So that's one example. Another example here is a um, slightly uh, more sophisticated case. Where, by the way, five, and four, and ten are just there are ten separate big data scenarios identified by NIST. I just chose uh, two here. In other slides, I do some of the other ones, and um, this again has HDFS and HBase. It again has a dupe through pig. But on top of this, it has multiple engines. Um, they could be clustering. Um, could, you know, the last one could be visualization. The first could be clustering. The second could be uh, cleaning up the cluster, putting in a user interface to, to improve it or analyze it. And then you have to link all these things together, which are currently rather simple as a pipeline. And that is called orchestration or workflow, which is this layer here. And our cheerful uh, user is invoking the pipeline and examining the final results, the visualization. Hadoop is effectively used within each of these stages. Spark can actually do the overall orchestration. 